Welcome to another edition of Wildcat Country, but this one is presented by our newest sponsor, Harris Auction and Casino in Maricopa. We are very glad to have them on board. Shane, we are becoming a bigger podcast to have a great sponsor like Harris Auction Casino. Let me just say this before before you chime in. Uh, I, you know, I used to work for Caesars and I mm -hmm. went down to Harris Auction multiple times, and it is such a cool place. I know it's far from where you live, where I live out there in Maricopa, but let me tell you what, if you're driving home from Tucson and you need a place to stay for the night, this is it. The casino is like a Vegas style casino, yet you can bet on sports right then and there. He asks, I, I think 24 seven, we'll have to ask. We'll find out their GM, Mike Kintner is going to join us later in the show, but Shane, here is Auction and Casino, our newest yeah. sponsor. What Make do you think? a weekend out of it. Like you said, Eric, I know you drive down for every single game. I'm a bad fan. I only do one or two games a year. And usually it's when I uh, mooch off one of your, your extra tickets. But I, I, I appreciate that very much. Uh, thrilled to have Harris on board. Looking forward to, uh, to chat with Mike. I know you had a great conversation with him last week. I'm looking forward to catching up with him. Uh, thrilled with the partnership we have you know, between Harris and obviously Ice Shaker has been our sponsor for a long time. We're very thankful for Chris Gronkowski and his support. So, uh, yeah, we're uh, – and I'll tell you what, it's it, it's kind of, it's great timing because we're coming up on our 200th episode and I know we're going to look at maybe doing some giveaways for that episode as well. So the stars are kind of aligning for Wildcat Country and we appreciate everyone uh, who has listened and watched to this point and gotten us this far. We really do appreciate it. We do that. Uh, I, we can echo that as well. Uh, I can echo that as well. Uh, great call on that, Shane. One thing that I want to mention, just throw this on your radar if you're listening out there. One game in the fall. Shane and I will be doing a post game show from Harris Auction Casino. Yep. You come on out there. Hey, maybe you'll, we'll buy you some drinks, we'll make some bets with you. Oh, so no. Come on oh, no. Okay. Uh, you know, I, if we win our bets. <laughs> if they, well, yeah. I was going to say if Arizona wins, then sure. Yeah. So if we bet on Arizona, they win. I could buy drinks. All I'm right. not saying for Fair everybody, enough. but you know, a chunk of people. Fair enough. If you, if you drive, if you drive out there and come introduce yourself, yeah, you could. You we know, could probably we could, swing. Yeah, yeah. I'll we, I'll we, I'll, we, I'll crack open the wallet. I I won't be such a cheapskate. That's fair. Uh, all right, that's fair enough. All right, let's get right into it. Uh, it is time before we get to buy or sell. It's time for Shane's standouts. What do we have this week? Well, how could we not start without Kylan Boswell? You know, the guy we we've yeah. kind of uh, we've we've been hard on him, man. Everyone's been hard on him, mm -hmm. but fourteen of eighteen from the field, eight of eleven from three point range in Arizona's wins over ASU and Oregon. I know you're at the ASU game and thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, he scored a combined 36 points, six assists, just two turnovers in those games. I know we're going to talk a little bit more about Kylan here shortly, so I'll just leave it at that for now. But he was uh, phenomenal in both games this past week. Now, so far, Eric, we have yet to give a single shout out to our top 25 gymnastics team. So I want to write that wrong right now. Okay. They put up a team record 49.625 on beam to help them get the win over Washington last weekend. Uh, senior Elena Dietz came just short of a perfect 10 with a career high 9.975 on beam. So shout out to the ladies on the gymnastics team for doing great work. Uh, I want to mention Colton Smith on the men's tennis team. He beat the 19th ranked player in the nation uh, to help Arizona beat number 15 Michigan State. So congrats to coach and former Wildcat country guest Clancy Shields on that victory and, well, and way to go Colton. And finally, another outstanding performance from Wildcat pitcher Cam Walty in Arizona's upset run rule victory over number 20, Indiana. He gave up one run on five hits in six innings. Now, Arizona's just five and six to open the season, but Cam is 3-0 and with a 1.84 ERA. So congrats to Whoa. him. Yeah, congrats to him on a fantastic beginning to the season. Yeah, that's that's phenomenal. I did not realize that. I was ready to get on here and, and expect you know, Arizona to get swept this weekend. And I was going to say, all right, we're going to pour the gasoline on the chip hail fire. And well, you present stats like that. Well, yeah. we'll get there. We'll talk yeah. about that a little bit, a little bit later in the program, but it is now time for buy or sell, which is presented by our friends at ice shaker. Go to ice shaker.com. Use promo code wildcat country, capital W capital C and get $5 off. After you buy one of those babies, make sure to mention wildcat country on your post purchase survey. Very important. And and we will be very, very happy with you. All right, Shane, number one, let's get right into it. You already brought it up. If Kylan Boswell plays like he did on Wednesday and Saturday last week, Arizona isn't losing anytime soon, if at all, the rest of the season. You know how, where I am on this one, Eric. I've been saying it almost all season. As Kylan Boswell goes, so goes Arizona. You know, he doesn't have to be their best player. And, and you, heck, he was with their only their fourth leading scorer against Oregon. But he has to contribute. You know, he doesn't have to go five of six from three point range every game. But, you know, 
double digits, couple assists, keep the turnovers down, contribute, be a factor in the game. And Arizona can beat anyone. Absolutely. We saw that against ASU. We saw that against Oregon. One of the common themes in their losses is Kylan Boswell disappears when they lose. It's not a coincidence. So, you know, Caleb Love, Arizona has been able to overcome some bad performances from Caleb Love and some other guys. But for whatever reason, with Kylan Boswell, it's very difficult for them to do. So I will 100% buy this one. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you one here, Shane. In Pac-12 play, when Kylan Boswell has double-digit points, how many losses do you think Arizona has? Uh, one at the most, maybe zero. The answer is zero. He's gone yeah. against Colorado, Utah, USC, Oregon, that's four. Utah again, Colorado again, that's six. ASU the first time, ASU the second time, and Oregon. When, you, when Kylan Boswell scores in double digits, Arizona is going to win more often than not. In fact, they've only lost once this year when Kylan Boswell has been in double digits, and that was a one-point game to FAU in double overtime in Las Vegas. He had 12 points, went 4 of 16 shooting, so really yeah. didn't play that well. But you're right. As Boswell goes, Arizona goes. And what I saw in person last Wednesday was Boswell playing with that confidence, and I think that's really, really important. I think that Tommy Lloyd dust-up that we saw a couple weeks ago or a, like a week and a half ago, was huge. It mm. Lloyd and him talked. They they kind of worked it out. And Boswell played inspired basketball. And he's going to need to do it again yeah. this weekend with a very difficult road trip uh, coming up for Arizona. And speaking of difficult road trips, we did not preview our first guest on the show, Shane, uh, an, a broadcaster, play-by-play -play broadcaster from the Pac-12 Network, Ted Robinson, going to join us in the second segment. We've had him on each of the last two years, so looking forward to getting his and, feedback. And he, on called what the he, AS, he called the ASU game, yeah, in Tempe, like you, like you're like you about to say before I interrupted yeah, you. Exactly. So we're going to see what happens with uh, – we're going to see what Ted thinks if Arizona is deserving of a number one seat. All right, question number two. All right, we're just right there, Shane. Based on the eye test, UConn, Purdue, Houston, and Arizona are the clear – Number one seats. Do you buy or sell that? Yeah, you the way I phrased it. You term, yeah, you use the term I test because you know how much I hate that term. Well, no, uh, no, no. That's not the word I was waiting to clear number clear one number, seats. Well, uh, I would say that there is a divide between those first three and the last one. I think UConn, Purdue, and Houston are very close to being locks at this point. I Agreed. think a lot would have to happen for the, any of them to, to be left out of that discussion. Arizona, I think, is probably the still in, in the lead, a slight lead for that fourth spot. I think Andrew Lenardi still has him as number one. I think he's right. Uh, here's the thing, and I, I posted this the other day. I think Arizona and Tennessee, because Tennessee is right behind Arizona. Tennessee and Arizona could both win out. And Tennessee could potentially surpass Arizona because Tennessee has a lot more chances for quality wins. They have two uh, top 25 opponents this week to end the regular season. Then likely if they win the SEC tournament, they're going to beat a couple more. Arizona doesn't have those kinds of opportunities. I mean, basically, like we talked about before the conference play started, Pac-12 is really more about just uh, avoiding landmines. And Arizona, like this week at UCLA, at USC, two teams with a net of around 100. It's If it's a win, it's, eh, it's what you're supposed to do. If it's a loss... It's something that can bump you down. So I think Arizona, I mean, at the minimum, I think they have to win out at this point because Tennessee is hot on their heels. And North Carolina might be a factor as well. Uh, if they lose, I think a lot's going to have to happen for them to get a one seat. With that said, I'd be fine with them as a two in the West. But back to your question, clear one seat. I think the first three teams are. Arizona is, as of now, in that fourth spot, but they have a very tenuous hold on it. I would agree with that. I So I'm going to sell it because it's the way I phrased it is it's a sell. Yeah. They are not a clear number one seed. You're absolutely right about that. I think it comes down to Arizona and Tennessee. As you said, maybe North Carolina could maybe throw them in there if they were to win, if they don't lose, you know, at all. And Arizona trips up and Tennessee trips up. But Tennessee's win at Alabama on Saturday night was yeah. that was one that we needed yep. uh, them to lose. As it stands now, I do not believe Arizona has any room for error. Uh, in terms of getting a one seed. They must win out. You must beat the Southern California schools and go 3-0 and in the Pac-12 tournament. Anything outside of 5-0, and I do not think Arizona gets a one seed. With that said, if they were to get a two seed in the West, I, as you said, yeah. I think it's great. And I do think optics play into it a little bit. Um, if Arizona loses one of their two games in, on their, uh, their LA trip this week and Washington State beats Washington at home, Washington State is, they're technically co-Pac-12 champions, and they finished essentially ahead of Arizona and going into the uh, Pac-12 tournament because they swept Arizona. They'd be the number one seed. I don't think they're, the selection committee could rationalize giving Arizona that got a share, if you want to put it that way, of a, of a, of a conference title in a pretty 
bad conference ahead of a team like Tennessee that if they end up winning their regular season and conference tournament, not easy to do, but if they did, I just can't envision a scenario in which the selection committee would favor Arizona in that scenario. Even the, they, Look, they have some great non-conference wins. That's why you play those games. I know we've been over it a lot. Yep. They, mm-hmm. those, a lot of those wins stand up very, very well. Uh, and I think Arizona is definitely in a discussion because of that. But they have some bad losses that other teams don't. That the loss at Oregon State just looks bad. That loss at Stanford looks really bad now. Uh, and if they lose another one to a, a non-quad one uh, opponent, I think that's going to about do it. Well, I think it, not only that, Shane, but these teams are under 500. I mean, UCLA yeah. is 14 and 15, and USC is 12 and 17. Mm-hmm. I mean, there there are no excuses. Now, if Arizona, let's say, were to win these two games this weekend, win next Thursday in the Pac-12 tournament, then, you know, come next Friday – you're probably going to face a Utah or Oregon type team who Arizona's two and zero against. It's always hard to beat the same team three times uh, in the same season. So, especially with with uh, Utah, throw Colorado in there if they were to play them. These are desperate teams that need as many quality wins as they can get. I don't know. I, I don't have as good of a feeling about the Pac-12 tournament. I guess we'll see what happens this weekend. But I, but we'll we'll get there. I think Arizona right now. I think they end up at number two. I agree. I, and I don't mean to. Yeah. I, and you and know I what? I would, I would take it. It's fine. I yeah. would take a two in the West in a heartbeat. Absolutely. Cause there, cause one team that's not a natural West team is going to have to come out and play the one seed in the West. Kind of like Arizona did two years ago when they got moved to the South because they were the second best team in the country. And the number one team happened to be in the West as well in Gonzaga. So to give me the number two seed all day in the West. Absolutely. And, and the other thing is I would rather Arizona win an outright regular season conference title than a PAC 12 tournament title. I really don't. I mean, if they if they win this weekend and then win next Thursday, I mean, you don't want to see them lose at all. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But that means more to me. You don't want to lose to a bad team on Thursday. These are under 500 teams. This is not this is not uh, UCLA of the last few years. This is a bad UCLA team that's gotten spanked lately. Yeah. So, you know what? As far as I'm concerned, you got to take care of business this week. All right. Number three, you sent me this article last week. I thought it was very interesting. So the Athletic uh, did college basketball blue bloods, and Mm. they had Duke, Kansas, Kentucky, North Carolina, UCLA, and UConn as the main blue bloods with Arizona on the in the next tier. Do you agree with that by yourself? I agree. I will buy that Arizona is in the next tier simply because they just don't have the number of national championships and final fours as the yep. rest of these. Well, I mean, look at Duke, Kansas, Kentucky, North Carolina. They all have at least 15 final fours and multiple national championships. UCLA, I mean, it. are you thinking more historically or more recently? Because obviously more recently they're not. What do you mean? They, they, were in a, they were in a final four. I know, but not, I mean, they're not consistently up there. So Arizona I, I don't hasn't made, I, I mean, Arizona has not made a final four in 20 something oh, years. I, I agree with you. I agree. I don't think they should be in that top tier with the rest of those teams. I just, you look at, you, you compare UCLA's body works over the last, say, 30 years to Arizona's. It's pretty comparable. So I, I'll just throw that out there. But if you want to put them in as a legacy blue blood, that, that's fine. UConn, I actually, UConn's so uh boomer bust you know it they have six final fours and they've won a national championship several times so i'm okay with that i but i to me i've always thought not always but the last few years i've thought you know the top four like those like the four true blue bloods duke kansas kentucky north carolina whatever or you want to put them ucla or yukon i could go either way arizona i think is right in that next tier absolutely i think the athletic for the most part got it right i think so too i think the fact is if arizona had a second national championship and maybe a couple more Final Fours in the last 20 years. Yeah. We could talk about that. But, I mean, it's just Elite Eight after Elite Eight. Mm-hmm. The interesting thing to me was Wisconsin was Tier 4, for example. And this is a team that's gotten a lot further than Arizona yeah. had. I, I mean, you can in go the down, last 20 yeah. years. You can go down. Yeah. And, look, National Championships and Final Fours aren't everything, which is why Arizona is as high as they are. You know, conference championships, regular season, and conference tournament, uh, in-season, uh, com- or in-season tournament championship. They've they've sent a lot of players to to the NBA, so all those things are very important. But one and one A national titles and Final Fours, Arizona definitely comes up short compared to some of these other teams. All right, we'll go with these next three quickly. Uh, number four, we'll get to football here. A fourteen team playoff in college football. Buy it if you like it. Sell it if you don't. I'll sell the, the proposed format uh, because as someone I forget who it was on Twitter uh, pointed out that it it very much it's kind of like 
uh, Champions League in soccer, the way they want to format it, where you, it, this conference gets three teams and this conference gets two teams. That's how it is in Champions League uh, soccer in, in Europe, where the Premier League automatically gets four, like the top four teams in or top five teams and, and other big leagues get that many. And then the other, like some of the, the so-called lower uh, leagues in, in smaller nations, they have to like win a play-in game to get in. I don't like that format. I think we should do a little more at large. I think if you want to reward the conference champions, that's fine. But after that, I think you, you go right down the list of the at large. I don't think that every each league should get a certain amount of bids. I don't like that. 14 team playoff, you could maybe buy it. You could convince me on that. Maybe I th still think an eight team is the best way to go. I think 12 is enough. 14 maybe, but the structure that is allegedly proposed for it, I don't care for. And I'm selling it. I, I think it, it's devaluing the regular season with 12. It'll be cool. You listen, the postseason will be fun, but it does devalue the regular season. And that's what college football has had over other sports, that the regular season matters. You look at, at uh, you know, college basketball, the regular season doesn't matter at all. You could have the worst team in the Pac-12 go win the uh, go win the Pac-12 tournament, a la Oregon State the other year, and make it to the Elite Eight. Yeah. You, you're not having that in college football. So that's that's why I've always appreciated college football and the regular season that they had. All right, uh, number five here. This came out today, Shane. Uh, odds to win the Big 12 championship next year. Utah's plus 340, so that's a little over three to one. Kansas State plus 360. Kansas plus 650. Arizona plus 750. Texas Tech plus 850. If I were to give you money to bet on one of those based on those odds, one of those five, which would you take at those odds? Oklahoma State's not in that picture. It's interesting. They are not, they are not in the first... Yeah, uh, yeah under ten five. to one. Yeah, under okay. ten to one. Interesting, because I might take them at, at, the, at whatever odds they're at. But from the ones listed, um, I, it's probably a toss up between Utah and Arizona. I mean, it, I I think it, look if if Jed Fish is still a head coach and they brought everyone back who they looked like they were going to bring back under Jed Fish, and I would and those were the odds, I'd absolutely take it. Oh, sure. As as it is. I would probably lean Utah. I think they're in a bit, bit, bit better situation, a little more stability, obviously. And then you know, just head to head, Utah is at home against Arizona. They're going to remember uh, the Arizona running up a little bit at the end there, which I, I don't, hang on, I, I think was still was a lot of fun to watch in person. Um, but I think that game's going to matter a lot. So if I had to put money on it, and and part, admittedly, part part of it is I, I kind of like to fade my teams because at least if they lose, I get, of course out we of know that. Yeah, we I know, know that. that. So that's yeah. part of it. That's part of it. But I, I think even with that, I think Utah is probably a little bit better position with, especially with cam rising coming back uh, to yeah. win the big 12. So I would probably lean Utah, even though the odds are about uh, not as good, obviously in terms of value as Arizona. Yeah. And Utah's schedule, just looking at it. I mean, their road games, they have to go out Oklahoma state early uh, at Houston, at Colorado, at UCF, not really anything. UCF is, I think the sixth favorite, uh, on paper there. I'm not sure where Oklahoma State was. I think they were back a little bit further. Uh, I actually like Kansas at six and a half to one. I think they mm. are they are interesting. I saw them in the bowl game, was really impressed, and they were without their starting quarterback right. in Jalen Daniels. But I would put Arizona second. Uh, I think at those odds, I can't bet a team uh, that is not a Georgia, Ohio State, th that type, uh, to win their conference at anything under five to one. So uh, okay. just throwing that. You know, Utah makes sense. But I can't bet. I personally can't bet a team at less than five to one to win. To win. Okay. So that just wanted to wanted to get that in there. All right. Another uh, bonus question here. The first major coaching move that new athletic director Desiree Reed Francois will have to make as Arizona's AD will be dot 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 fill in the blank. Shane. Well, the the obvious answer if you're thinking about the uh, some of the the more pro high profile sports, you, you got to think that the the chip might be on the old block if uh, if Arizona doesn't improve. Um, Arizona's baseball program, we don't talk about them enough as far as what they've done nationally. I know they're not like the na consider the national powerhouse that the men's basketball team is and the softball team has, but they've won four college world series for goodness sake. They they, they have one of the best resumes of any program out there. And we deserve better than a 500 club at Arizona. And, and as much as I like Chip Hale, and I think that, you know, we had him on the uh, podcast when he was hired and he, he really does see this as a destination job. And I really wish it works out. But if this is a 500 team in, in his third year, you, you think that, that, that she might make a move. Uh, so I, that would be the obvious answer. I mean, there's no one else in terms of, uh, I mean, that, that I could think of at this moment that would necessarily be in in in, in big trouble. Um, no, I, I think the only one, the only other one I would throw in there is probably Adia Barnes if she decided to leave yeah, on her I'll, own. Okay. Yeah, I mean she's not going to get fired, but no. I think if she were to leave on her own and just say, "Hey, I I need a fresh start," you know, and get more money, 
That's another. I think it's between Hale because I, I, you know, Brennan's not going anywhere anytime soon. No. Tommy Lloyd just got extended, and Caitlin Lowe has a team that right now is playing some really good softball. They're yep. in the top twenty-five. I think they're twenty-first mm-hmm. right now. So I don't think she's going anywhere. And then the other two sports that are, you know, more high profile include, you know, women's basketball and baseball. So I would put Hale number one and then Adia a distant number two. All right. Uh, Before we get to our guest, Ted Robinson, let me once again say that Wildcat Country is presented by Harris Auction Casino, which is the only Valley Casino with Caesars Rewards, the player's card that pays for Vegas and more. In fact, the reward credits you earn with Caesars Rewards can be redeemed for hotel stays, dining, and more at 50 destinations across the country, including Las Vegas, Lake Tahoe, New Orleans, and Harris Auction. So sign up, play, and earn Caesars Rewards only at Harris Auction Casino. One card, 50 destinations to enjoy your perks. Coming up next, it's Ted Robinson here on Wildcat Country. What's up, Wildcat Country? Chris Gronkowski here, and I'm at the Ice Shaker Warehouse, the proud sponsor of the Wildcat Country podcast. And I got something new and exciting to show you. We're talking about the 4D printed University of Arizona shaker bottles with the Legacy Championships on it. Check it out now at IceShaker.com. Third straight year, we are very pleased to welcome the voice of the Pac-12 Network, Ted Robinson, who is, you can hear him do football games, you can hear him do basketball games, and also hear him do the Olympics this summer in Paris for NBC. So, Ted, glad to have you on once again. You just called Arizona and Arizona State last yep. Wednesday. I was at the game. Obviously, you were sitting a little bit closer than I was because I was not courtside. <laughs> From what you saw, are the Wildcats a number one seed in your opinion? Yes, yes, and I and I have to admit I'm saying this in something of a vacuum because I don't pay attention to the other parts of the country as much as I once did. Uh, my basketball season ends in Las Vegas, so I don't, uh, you know, I don't do the tournament. So, but but I mean, they they are every bit a Final Four level team. They're every bit a team that can win the national championship. Now, those are all you know cans, and you know, will they do it is a different question. Um, I was struck, guys, uh, by that game that I watched the game and I, I walked away with uh, Matt Mulebach and we were saying, you know, I said, how many players on Arizona State's team would play for Arizona this year? And I said, maybe my answer is one. I mean, Tommy's, Tommy's gone with a straight eight-man rotation. Frankie Collins might be the only guy on the Arizona State team that would play in that eight-man rotation for Arizona. It gives you an idea of the talent gap. That's where I'm going with it. And I, by the way, I think Bobby Hurley's actually done a terrific coaching job this year because I don't see his talent level at ASU being what it's been. And that Arizona, both Arizona, Arizona State games to me highlighted that difference. And the game in Tempe, I mean, it just with that, you were there, so you know, Eric. I mean, God, the atmosphere was fabulous. That's It's an old, tired building, but it doesn't feel old and tired when it's full. And And they had a great atmosphere, and Arizona just commanded that game just commanded the game. So yes, back to your question. The answer is to me is yes, they are number one. Yeah. And I, I did enjoy it. And I shared this with Eric, uh, cause he was at the game that you called, uh, you called out CBS's CBS's uh, your words, bracket boy for having Arizona as a, as a, as a two seat <laughs> Jerry Palm, who actually was on this pot uh, on this podcast. I, before. Yeah. And, and Matt Mielbach has been our guest, I guess, several times with us yeah. as well. So yeah. Um, yeah, and I, I don't know, I don't know any of the bracket people personally. Yeah. So it's not personal. I just, you know, everybody's, now trying to make a living off doing this stuff. But I mean, it is absurd that you think you're good enough to count your dick via actual committee's rating. <laughs> the committee had just come out and said Arizona's on the one line and you come out and you say your formula is better than theirs. I, I don't understand that. Yeah. Well, it, 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 it's, it's bold. We'll, we'll, we'll leave it at that. Yeah. L- let yeah. me ask you about uh, Kylan Boswell because you know he's, he's probably the guy, the Wildcats been talked about more often this season as yeah. far as being up and down and up and down. And yeah. he turned it around last week, had a great game at ASU and then followed it up with another game. Fantastic game against Oregon. I feel like as he goes, he'll go, this team will go as far as Kylan Boswell takes them as great as Caleb Love is the common denominator in, in all, almost all of Arizona's wins is Kylan Boswell plays well when they lose, he doesn't play well. What are your thoughts? Yeah, that's an interesting take, and and every team seems to have every good team seems to have one player that you would say that about. And I, like you, I've seen the Cats in person three times. I've probably watched twelve other games on television, and he's a better player. There's no question. Uh, he's had games where he's lost, and that's that's the puzzling part. 
The great part is that even in the ASU game, Jaden Bradley comes in. Jaden Bradley, when Boswell got the foul trouble near the end, Jaden Bradley gave him great minutes down the stretch. You didn't miss Boswell at all. Um, I think the other uh, uh, point that Boswell's importance and Caleb Love's importance, and even Bradley will be in March for Arizona, when Washington State played at McHale. Now, even though the Cougs won the game, the last five, six minutes of the game, Miles Rice didn't play, if you notice that. Miles Rice didn't play. Now, Miles Rice has had a fat – he's going to be freshman of the year in the league. But Miles Rice is very slight of build. And clearly his illness and the treatments and all have left him in that state. But I'm saying he was getting muscled. I mean, he couldn't handle the strength of the Arizona guards. So to me, that's a really positive sign for Arizona heading into March. Question for me in March is going to be, can they cover up the inside? Because a couple of the games they lost this year, and I did the Stanford game, and I watched the Washington State game in Pullman, and they went right inside. They went right in at both those teams. Stanford, everybody talks about the threes. Stanford hit the threes because they went inside and they succeeded. And then they were able to kick out and get good looks. And to their credit, they made the shots. But I, I just my own sense watching the Cats to me is can they defend in, in the paint against the real good teams that they were eventually going to play? Yeah, compare this team, Ted, to Arizona's first two under Tommy Lloyd. You know, they were a one seed two years ago, a two seed last year. They came up short in both tournaments. Is this team a little bit more built for March than those teams were? I, I would hope so, because I, I think that strength to me is a big part of it. You just you, you our our conference forever has been this way when when the teams and Arizona's the leader in this pack would play really good teams in non-con from other parts of the country. And you saw the physical. I mean, I remember being in McHale a few years back when Illinois came in and Arizona won the game. But you watch, you looked at Illinois in the warmups come, my God, look at the size of these guys. I mean, they clearly are in advanced strength programs that you just don't see as much. And to me, the biggest uh, 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 lack of seeing that in our league through the years has been UCLA. And UCLA's had some terrific teams, really terrific teams, but they've never been that muscle bound physical team. And I, I, I think Arizona is closer to that stronger physical team that will build them well. Um, and clearly, the, the you know last year's team was so much around the, the two man high low game with Tubelis and, and Balo. This year, Caleb Love is your man, and, and you see it. Everybody who's probably watching this has seen it far more than I. But I love the fact that Love is totally fearless. And in March, you need that. In March, you need that. I mean, look what Jalen Suggs did. You know, a couple of years ago for Gonzaga when UCLA was making its run. I mean, that's the kind of guy you need in March. And I, I, you know, as as important as you say Boswell has been, which I agree with, the guy that's going to take the shot to win the game for him most likely is going to be Love. You know, let's hope it's from the two point line and not the three point line because he tries to play hero ball uh, too often for for yeah. our, our sake here. All right, let's talk about the games this weekend: UCLA and USC. I know you're not doing them; those games are on ESPN. How do you think Arizona matches up on the road? Uh, against USC and UCLA. Now, when they played USC before at McHale, USC was missing some guys. And UCLA had Arizona up, I think they were up 18 or something like that, and then blew the lead and the Wildcats won. How do you feel about Arizona's chances uh, in the LA area this weekend? I'd be a little more concerned about the USC game. You want my truth? <laughs> I'd be a little more concerned about them. Mm. Um, and and I, look, this is huge for Arizona because they have two number one seeds on the line this weekend, right? If the number one seed in Vegas... If they lose once, they likely are going to be the two seed in Vegas because I don't see Washington State losing Thursday Great night point. at home to Washington. So if the Cats lose one, assuming the Cougs win, then they're the number two seed, and then that may jeopardize their number one seed in the overall dance. So big weekend. I just fear USC because Collier is healthy, and Collier's the best young player. In our, I mean, Miles Rice is going to win freshman of the year deservedly. Collier's the best player. He just missed half the conference season. He can't win that award. He is tough. And to me, USC is the classic any given night team now. And they're just way better than their record. Uh, I think no one, they will be the team absolutely that everybody wants to avoid drawing in Vegas. <laughs> uh, somebody, you know, if you win, you're eventually going to face them probably. But uh, that to me is the more concerning game. What USC hasn't done tremendously well to defend and that's the challenge if they if arizona can play its top offense it's a offensive game that would be their way to win because usc likely not going to be able to slow them down um ucla and i just saw ucla saturday in pullman and they are just uh, you know they're they're good but they're not 
they're they're a level at least one full level below Arizona and Washington State, uh, and and I think you know it's it's going to be interesting. It's it's their last home game in Pauley. It's the last Arizona UCLA game for the foreseeable future. So there'll be all that emotion. You'll say senior day, but I don't know if they have any. Uh, probably Kenny Nuba is probably the only senior. So you're not going to have the emotion you would have had last year with that incredible senior group leading. Uh, so again, back to where I started. I think this is a much I am I'm if I'm a Wildcat fan, I'm really focused on Thursday. I think that's the tough game for me. All right. Well, it's, it's Arizona plays UCLA Thursday, I think, and then USC is is Saturday. Actually, so I'm sorry, that, that's my bad. I have the order reversed. Oh, okay, yeah. I'm even more concerning them because they're going to come off the emotion of playing UCLA and have to get up in 36 hours to play USC. Even more concerning. All right, there and there you go. All right, Shane and I have talked about this a lot. This is not necessarily an Arizona question, but would you? How do you feel about a, having a number one seed in the tournament versus a number two seed? Is there that much of a difference as long as Arizona is in the West? Either way, where that's it. That's the difference to me, Eric and Shane. Where are you playing? The number is. I mean, the number one or two doesn't matter to me. It's where you're playing. The tra- I mean, having done it for so many years and listened to so many different coaches opine and occasionally whine about about that issue it's not travel and uh you know the 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 biggest challenge to me for a really good team in the ncaa tournament is when you're set across the country because you've earned that seed but to have that seed line you've got to go travel across the country either way and i i saw uconn i covered uconn when they came west a couple times they couldn't stand it i had syracuse this is probably 10 years ago uh, and Bayheim had a really good team, and they sent him to Salt Lake City, and he was miserable. And you know what? His team played that way, and they lost. His team was miserable. Um, so, uh, and and we've all been, you know, you've all lived it. Obviously, I called one of my last tournament games was the Wisconsin game in Anaheim, which to me was the that was the golden opportunity for Sean Miller to get to a Final Four. And sadly, you know, as as you all know, it didn't happen. But that's the sort of thing. And especially this year with Gonzaga not being in that position. Gonzaga does not have the status this year to get that top team in the West. Again, it should be the Cats. And assuming they hold themselves together this weekend, then I I would think they would be. I don't think Las Vegas would affect them being the number one seed if they play well this weekend. All right, Tim, well, we have you. Let's talk a little football. Uh, Arizona looked like they're going to be maybe a top 10 team next season with Jed Fish, and then he leaves. Brent Brennan comes in. Brent's done a great job of keeping a lot of the guys from last year, but obviously there's been some turnover, probably more coming within the next transfer portal. Uh, give us a quick preview of Arizona football as you see it as of now going into their first Big 12 season. Yeah, I'm, I'm sad for for the university's fans. I'm sad that that there was a coaching change. Uh that being said, you won. Brent Brent, I know Brent Brennan, you know, know him casually for being in the Bay Area. He's terrific. And, and of course, has a great connection to the U of A. Great hire for the U of A. Uh, and then the most rewarding thing that I saw in December, and I heard about it, I, I heard about it when I came to McHale for a game, was the three guys staying. When the three guys stayed and they got the ovation at McHale when they came out to a game. And to me, in this era, when when everybody is a free agent every day of the year and they come out of class on Tuesday, every Tuesday of the year, and they come out of class and they're being called by people saying, come play for us. We'll give you X for those three kids to stay. That's terrific. And, and I I just think that at a time when we're, when all of our, at least certainly someone like me, who's been around a while, when our views about the college scene are, are being challenged, that was a rewarding thing. Um, And look, I, I think Utah, I, I again, I'm not going to be proclaimed to be an expert on the big whatever conference that they're going to call it football, but certainly it wasn't a great football conference last year. Utah, to me, would likely be the favorite going in. Arizona is going to be right there with them, right there. And that's a great thing for the U of A's to go to a new league where they're going to have a chance to win it and be in the top two. Or, I mean, they were in the top two this year. They have a chance to be in the top two or three in their new league next year. That's that's awesome. And and it, it is a shame that uh, the Pac-12 is it will be. It's still surreal to me to think there's not going to be another Pac-12 football game ever. At least the way we we know the Pac-12, and the same with basketball soon. Your thoughts overall on on the conference folding? Uh, I mean, for lack of a better term, I know you still have the Pac-2, but going to the Big 12, the end of an era. Either way, y- your thoughts on that? Well, it's it's frustrating now, and I mean, I'm not going to go over the history. It's been well chewed up by now, but you know, obviously everything that happened 
to me reflects a massive lack of leadership. And I'm, I'm sorry, it's university presidents as well as the conference hierarchy. Um, I've said this frequently. Uh, I have two numbers for you, two billion and three trillion. Two billion devices like I'm holding in my hand, two billion of them around the world, made by a company whose market cap is three trillion dollars. And to denigrate the chance to be in business with them, which sadly was done by some people in our soon to be disbanded league, to me was I, I don't understand. Um Sadly, now, my view, and I've said this to some coaches, is, look, we've all known for a year we had bought tickets on the Titanic. The difference now is we can see the iceberg <laughs> and we know where we're, we know where it's heading. So that's the that's the difficult part for everybody right now. Um, I do truly believe that there will be some resurrection of this conference. And I couldn't tell you how long it's going to take, although my my feeling now is it'll be sooner rather than later. It will not involve football. But I think all of the other sports, including basketball, will likely come back. This model that everybody's going to is not sustainable. And, you know, you, I mean, I, I was at ASU and they can, and I know U of A feels this way. You can give me all the stuff you want about how great it's going to be when Iowa State comes in and fills your basketball arena. You don't have a, well, Arizona doesn't have this problem. ASU does. And Kansas State is going to fill your basketball arena in Tempe. Great. That'll last a year. And uh, the fact that you just have no connection to, the schools that I mean you're going into pretty much a random collection of schools that didn't have a home in one of the big leagues. And that's really sad to say, but that's the truth. And there'll be some great programs. And look, the, 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 the conference basketball, by the way, is fabulous. And let me make sure I'm saying that men's basketball, Tommy Lloyd will be fine. The other three schools, good luck because you're going into a conference that has valued men's basketball, has invested in men's basketball, and has succeeded clearly at it to a much greater degree than the pack has. So that is a very good thing. Football, it's not as good a league. And that's why U of A, Utah, and even if uh, if the president, university president of Colorado, uh, Deion Sanders, can you know get his team playing at a higher level in year two, they've got a chance in that league. I mean, who's the powerhouse, right? So it's it's a it's a mixed bag. So Anyway, you could tell it's it's emotional, it's frustrating, as it should be. Anybody that cares about it, and I've been in and around this conference for 37 years. So uh, working for schools and and working for rights holders. And so it's frustrating. It's It, it shouldn't have happened. And um, I'm sad, mostly, and even U of A, which has had a you know, great baseball program, resurrected tennis program with Clancy Shields down there, great swimming and diving, diver Delaney Schnell at the U of A, who won an Olympic medal, who I will see again this summer in Paris. I mean, those are the programs that are really going to get hurt. And that's why I a sense that there will be a return to some sort of a regional conference. And I'm not going to tell you UCLA and USC will be in it. I don't know if that's going to happen, but I think most of the other schools in the West, you'll have your Olympic sports back here. We can certainly hope so. And that's a great prediction, Ted. No, I've, I haven't heard anyone else say that. And I really like it. And I think it just doesn't make sense. Stanford and Cal playing the ACC. I mean, that's yeah. it, it, it just doesn't make sense. All right. Last question for you. I'm putting you on the spot with this one. What is your what's your favorite Arizona memory that comes to mind from their pack from your Pac-12 days deal? You know, working with them. Uh, well, overall, it's McHale Center. I mean, it's just it's just been the one standout venue going way back to 1986 when I first was in this league doing radio for Stanford, and I did the NCAA tournament games the first time they were at McHale. Loot had basically badgered the city of Tucson to sell out the arena for the first and second round back when you could host first and second rounds. And they did, they sold at McHale and sadly it was the year Steve Kerr missed and U of A lost to UTEP. Don Haskins was still coaching UTEP and UTEP came in and won a, uh, it was a uh, overtime game. And it was, you know, a, a terrific Arizona team that within a year or two was in the final four. Um, I have that great memory. Um, and then through the years of watching, uh, as the Cal announcer, I remember probably the single best offensive basketball game I've called in 30-something years of the Pac-12 was 1994. I was the radio voice for Cal. Jason Kidd and Lamont Murray coming in to play against Stoudemire and Reeves. And the game ended up, I, you could look up the score, but it was like 103 to 96. Or it was some just a fabulous, skilled NBA top-level talent. And those guys going back and forth. Um, 
and, and, and then seeing Arizona program finally get resurrected by Sean, you know, after you all know what the, the low points were in the transition period. Those are the memories I'll face. You know, I, I don't have the, the I, I wasn't around as much for the Larry Smith era in football. So I don't have those great football memories. Um, I will tell you, I also, my partner, my first football partner, the first five or six years on Pac-12 Network was Glenn Parker, who I cherish, a wonderful guy and a great U of A guy, and working with Matt Muehlbach uh, a lot in basketball. Probably the last five years has been another highlight. So those are my U of A, you know, first things that run into my mind. Well, Ted, we always appreciate having you on third straight year, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, you're one of the best in the business. Always have enjoyed your calls. As I mentioned to you off the air, and I always bring it up, the Bryce Drew call 26 years ago. I remember yeah. exactly where I was uh, as a freshman in high school, watching outside the gym on a little square TV with a bunch of people. And we all jumped up and yelled, just as you did as the play-by-play -play guy. So thank you so much for joining us. And hopefully we can continue the streak again next year. And I wish you guys all well. And, and I really do. Is I, I've really been, you know, become friendly with Bobby Robbins and a lot of the Arizona athletic people. And Matt Ensor is fabulous. And I, I really wish Arizona well in this new venture. And uh, and I'll miss coming to Tucson. I really will. I'll miss Mikhail most of all. And I do hope that uh, that someday I may be sitting in the stands at, after doing it this many years. But I'll sit in the stands with a Modelo and watch and cheer. Maybe Tito will let me sit next to him someday. What do you think? <laughs> Sounds good to me. Thanks again. Good. I'd really Thanks, guys. It. Discover more play for all at Harris Ock Chin Casino. Thanks, Mo. Here are your drinks. Where having fun means racking up reward credits with the Caesars Rewards Loyalty Program. They can be redeemed for food, free play, hotel stays, and more. Not only here in the city of Maricopa, but also at more than 50 Caesars properties coast to coast. From Harris, Las Vegas, to Caesars Palace in Atlantic City. What are you waiting for? Play for all at Harris Ock Chin Casino, the official sponsor of play. All right, Shane, our brand new sponsor, Harris Auction and Casino. So excited to have them on board and very excited to have Mike Kintner, who is the GM, Harris Auction and Casino, joining us here in our first sponsored uh, Wildcat Country with Harris Auction and Casino. Mike, glad to have you on here. We'll talk about the hotel and casino here shortly. Let's talk a little U of A. Uh, we saw a good weekend for the basketball team. They took care of business against ASU then looked dynamic against Oregon. Final four or bust, do you agree with that? Uh, you yeah, know, I, I, I agree. You know, when I, I was looking back, uh, you know, uh, thinking about it today, uh, getting ready for the podcast uh, with you guys. And first off, I'd like to say, uh, you know, really proud to be sponsors of Wildcat Country and following along. Great program. Um, love what you guys are doing with it. Um, get a little bit of that good cop, bad cop. I think I would buy that Eric's the good cop and Shane's yep. the bad cop maybe most of the oh, time. Yeah. So, so it's great. So wanted to, wanted to get involved with you guys. Um, uh, but but yeah, when I think back, uh, Arizona basketball. I I uh, graduated from University of Arizona twice, uh, December '96, and then again with my MBA, December of '13. But then you know '96 '97 has to be my you know my my favorite team uh, of all time with with UVA basketball. And looking back at it and kind of where they were and how that happened, you know I I think I think this team is you know really well poised. Uh, with, you know, what four starting seniors, two guys that have been there before and Caleb Love and Keyshawn Johnson in that national championship game. Instead of winning just five, maybe we can win six this year and do it in Phoenix that'd be, or Glendale. That'd be amazing. Um, so, so yeah, I think my favorite team of all time, 96, 97, uh, you know, that's uh, graduating, that sort of thing. Uh, followed up closely by that 2000, 2001 team, you know, uh, Richard Jefferson and Luke Fulton, those guys. But, uh, you know, I'm a season ticket holder. I love uh, Wildcat basketball. I've been for a while. Um, and I'm really excited about this year, you know, a little, little nervous and I get the way, you know, uh, you know, people are talking about it, like, you know, especially after last year and some of our, our recent sort of uh, uh, early exits. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm all in and on Tommy Lloyd and, and this team and I believe him. This is you know, the best group of guys he's had. And you know, I hope we can make a real deep run. Yeah, two two things uh, always occur in, in March, Mike, for me. It's uh, well, I, it's my wife's birthday, so I got to remember that, of course. And then, of course, it's butt clenching season because the NCAA <laughs> tournament is coming. So, uh, like Eric said, really excited to have you on board. Appreciate it very much. Uh, I know you and Eric have known each other for a while, and 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 you've 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 stuck around. You've you've stuck with them all this time, and 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 we, you know, can't can't say that for everyone. We really appreciate that. Uh, let me ask you about the the Brent Brennan hire. What are your thoughts on bringing him on board to replace Jet Fish? 
You know, I think like a lot of people, I was a little like, you know, really excited about the team this past year. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a season ticket holder for football as well. Actually, my mom uh, moved uh, out to Texas, so I bought her tickets as well. So I have like, eight season tickets. My brother is a fire captain down there for the Golder Ranch Fire District, so his family gets to join us and use us a lot. It's uh, We're creating great memories. Um, a lot of Wildcat grads in my family, but, uh, you know, as I, I, at first, I, I didn't. I didn't really love the Jed Fish hire, to be honest. I think I texted Dr. Bobby and was like, who's this guy and what is this about? And then I think, you know, probably about three, four months in, I texted him back and was like, you know, I kind of like what this guy's selling. So um, kind of had, had to do that. And then and then this time again, I had to text Dr. Bobby and said, hey, you know, Brent Brennan, I mean, Mountain West, I know they're talking about him before, you know, I get it. Um, you know, I, I get the, 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 the relationship to the program, but you know, I, I don't know. I was hoping we could do something a little bit better. And I think I was still a little bit of shell shock too with Jed leaving the, the, the quality of the team and, and knowing what we did this past year and what we're set to do going into the, uh, going into the big 12. So, so I was like, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't know. And, and uh, Dr. Bobby, like I did before, didn't respond to my text originally. And then I think it was like, instead of three months, it was like two or three days. It was after the press conference with that all happened so fast. I saw that press conference and I, uh, um, I think I, I won't read you the, the, the text back and forth, but basically said, you know, I get it. I'm ready to suit up and run through a wall for Coach Brennan. And uh, man, what a, I, I think they kind of hit it out of the park with this one and really exciting things happening at U of A, you know, with uh, football and basketball and you know, even baseball had a big win, I think, uh, over the weekend, beat number 20 uh, in the nation. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, yeah, just just exciting times to be, uh, you know, around uh, Arizona Wildcat sports. And the first time in a quarter century that Arizona swept ASU in football, men's basketball, and women's basketball. And they would have done last year, if not for a 60-foot heave that we don't have to talk about. Uh, last question for you, Mike. Uh, appreciate you joining us, like like we said. Uh, your favorite in-person Wildcat memory? You said you're a football and basketball season ticket holder. What, what was your favorite in-person memory as a Wildcat? In-person memory, um, I guess I would have to say, well, I met Lute Olsen out at, um, uh, in Anaheim at one of the uh, – one of the postseason uh, tournaments. I want to say it was in the Eagles. I want to say it's when we lost to UConn in Anaheim um, right after we beat Duke. So um, that was pretty cool getting to meet him in person. I got a picture with him and that sort of thing. But my favorite, I think, looking back when I was uh, I graduated from the racetrack history program at the U of A, little known program, got me into horse racing and gaming. Um, but I, I worked uh, for Dave Sitton and his PR firm. Um, a lot of people know Dave or remember Dave, awesome human being. I got to work for him and I was working at Rideau Park there during the racing season and for like one of the radio promotions they had a couple of football players one of them happened to be uh, teddy brewski and uh how cool was it to have him out there and all excited about horse racing and that sort of thing and another uh, great human being great wildcat and that's uh, probably my favorite member that's pretty cool yeah to be out at Rito park i've actually never been i lived right by it at north point or whatever was formerly called jefferson commons most people know what i'm talking about out there but i actually never went to the park and now as I've gotten older, I'm like, darn, I really missed an opportunity. I'm going to go betting in college. How cool would that have been? Nonetheless, speaking of betting, you guys at Harris Auction have a giant casino. You have a sports book. You have kiosks. Give us some of the highlights that you would you would kind of tell our listeners about before they go and check it out. Well, Harris Auction, you know, we're, we're uh, uh, the auction Indian community owns this business. Wonderful uh, community to work for. It's 1,100 members, half of them under the age of 18. So we get to see the fruits of our labor every day go right back into the auction community uh, so they can reinvest in this business. We get cool jobs and take care of their elders and both functional members. So that's exciting uh, for us. But Caesars Entertainment manages the business under the Harris uh, brand. Um, we're one of 50 plus properties across the United States. Uh, Caesars Rewards, our loyalty program, it's the number one loyalty program in casino gaming in the country, as voted uh, uh, by, by folks in the USA Today poll the last three years. And we've been ranked up there for a long time. So. Um, it, you know, we really like to think we provide, you know, good value back to our customers. And we're a little south of, of Phoenix, uh, a little north of Tucson, but kind of a good stopping point in between if you're going going down that way, down the 347 from uh, Chandler, Awatuki, or coming up off the 8 uh, and the 10 um, up here in Maricopa. Uh, wonderful casino. We have over 500 hotel rooms, uh, over 1,100 slot machines, 25 table games. We have Caesar Sportsbook on property. There's also the Caesar Sportsbook. Um, app out there um, when you're not here at the casino and when you when you play with us you earn reward credits and the reward credits you can use to spend for food dining hotel uh, and other things here at the casino or any of the casinos across the country so um, it really is your your passport to las vegas or atlantic city or chicago or new orleans or california we have properties everywhere and uh 
it, it you know, it, it's a wonderful place to play. We still have a dozen team members. We're celebrating thir- our thirtieth anniversary this year. We have a dozen team members that have been here since day one. So, wow, celebrating thirty years this year it really speaks to our culture. A lot of folks. I've been here eighteen and a half years. Wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Uh, like I said, love the auction community. Love working for Seasons Entertainment. Uh, it's it's a perfect marriage, and uh, you know we're we're your ticket to uh, to, to Seasons Rewards and uh, eras or Seasons across the country. Yeah, and I mean I've gotten a chance to walk around the casino and and kind of the property. Uh, a decent amount, obviously, when I worked for Caesars and and I met you originally back then and, and just a, a really expansive property. I guess one thing that that I would almost say, and I, I know you guys don't brand yourselves this way. It's almost an all inclusive out there because, you're you know, one of those where you, you can stay and you can be there for, you know, a week at a time. And, and there's always something to do. I mean, you have different activities right nearby that you don't have to leave the property and there are different restaurants, obviously. And how many different er, restaurants are on site and other types of activities outside of the casino that, that people can do? Well, Eric, as you know, we have big name entertainment. I think we had you out here. Uh, you did. The last year. Down in Crows. Down in Crows. Uh, we have Foreigner coming up, uh, the original Foreigner coming up here pretty soon. Um, we do a lot of like like country acts and, and that sort of thing. So a lot, lot of exciting stuff on our event calendar. Um, right next door to us is Auction Circle. It's a, it's a 12-screen movie theater, bowling alley, laser tag. All that sort of stuff. Uh, restaurants there, um, and the, the auction community also auction Southern Dunes, about five miles from us. That's the annual host of the Copper Cup, um, which uh, uh, University of Arizona won this year. They beat not only uh, ASU but also um, UCLA uh, in the final. So that was great to see with those guys out here. They stay here at the property, um, and you know it, it's just. Uh, I mean, you know, in the summertime we have a swim up bar at the pool, great place to stay. Again, we have a we have the season sports book. We have a little something for everybody. A wonderful steakhouse. Chop block and brew, wine and small plates at uh, Oak and Fork, um, our Copper Cactus Grill. We can't go wrong in Agaves for our breakfast spot. It's it, we, we have something for everybody, um, and it's, it really is in Arizona. Um, I think I saw somebody on X just recently with one, when you announced it say, it's a nice spot, a little, little staycation. It's not in Phoenix proper. It's not in Tucson proper. It feels like we're getting away, um, and it's a wonderful place. It's an easy well, we will have you on throughout the year and glad to have you as a partner. Uh, glad to have, you know, work with another, a fellow Wildcat. And let me tell you out there, you know, for people that haven't been, it's definitely worth going and hanging out. It's a great place. Shane and I will be there at multiple times, uh, you know, between the two of us uh, throughout the year. So looking forward to it, Mike. Thanks for joining us. Glad to have you on board and uh, obviously bear down. Yeah, thanks, guys. Bear down. All right, time to make some picks. We both had a rough week. I, I'm almost afraid to give the record. Uh, nice. I'm not counting either of our Arizona wins because we didn't have them by enough. I mean, mm. this was two dominant victories, and you and I both had it essentially by single digits. Uh, you had Arizona by 10 against Oregon, and that was not enough to cover the spread. All right, let's start with women's basketball this week. How many wins will Arizona have in the Pac-12 tournament, Shane? Probably one, and then you know they beat Washington, and then they'll lose to whoever they, they play next. Yeah, I, I think uh, they... They they really needed to beat USC to have a chance in the NCAA tournament, and they 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 honestly they choked that game away, blew a five point lead yes. in the last thirty last thirty seconds. Ugh. Second time this year they've done that, and now they're fading. They got their butt kicked by UCLA. I think they're kind of back down to reality now. So I think they're going to be one and done in the Pac twelve tournament. Yeah, it looks like Arizona would play UCLA if or it would play UCLA on if they, Thursday if as the won. two seed. Arizona yeah. is the seven seed playing Washington. I think they win that game and then they play UCLA and. Yeah, That's one it. and done. Yep. Uh, or two and two and out, we'll say. All right. Give me a, a Pac-12 road win, Shane. Who's going to, you know, win an unranked team that's going to win on the road in the conference? I'm going to take, uh, and maybe this is the same as yours, I'm going to take Utah at Oregon State. Uh, this is the game okay. the, the Utes have, have, they have to have this game in order to stay in the NCAA tournament this, uh, conversation. They destroyed Oregon State by 27 points at home a few, a few weeks ago, so I will go with Utah. I'm going Colorado over Oregon State. I think that the Buffs are right on that bubble. And, yep. you know, it's it's this is a team that needs wins, and you cannot afford to lose to a not very good Oregon State team as Arizona did. Uh, Arizona could get away with it. Colorado can't. I'm so you're taking Utah, I'm taking Colorado. All right, top 25 loss against an unranked team. I'm going Mississippi State home over number 17 South Carolina on Saturday. How about you, Shane? Solid pick. I'm going to take Texas Tech over Baylor. Uh, Tech is 14-2 and two at home. Baylor's 4-4 four and four on the road. They had a close game in their first matchup at Baylor. The Bears won that one by six. I think Tech gets the job done this time at home. 
All right, top 10 loss against an unranked team going Villanova over number 10 Creighton. Uh, Villanova, the Wildcats played pretty well lately. I think it might be a little too late for their NCAA tournament chances, but a win over Creighton, they're getting closer to the bubble. If teams like Colorado and Utah mess up, Villanova might have a chance to get in. How about you? Yeah, we have we have the same pick on this one, Erica. Like Utah, I think Villanova's squarely on the tournament bubble. They need a statement win. They've won their last two games decisively. They'll be at home. Uh, even though my wife won't like it because my ex-girlfriend went to Villanova, I will take Nova for my top 10 upset. You never know what you'll hear on Wildcat Country. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, let's get to the big games. Thursday night, Arizona at UCLA. Games on ESPN. Shane, what are you picking and by All how right. many? Well, this would have been an easy pick for me two weeks ago, Bruins win, but UCLA has lost three in a row, including a home loss to USC. But I just can't get that game in Tucson out of my head. For whatever reason, I think UCLA matches up well with Arizona. It really is a rivalry game between these two, and I think, you know, you, know, you don't throw out the records, but I don't think they matter as much. This is the last scheduled game Arizona will play at UCLA for the foreseeable future. I'm going to be the the Debbie Downer and take UCLA by a basket. And maybe that's just me being stubborn because I've had this game penciled in as a loss for Arizona for a while. I'm going to stick with it and take the Bruins at home. All right. I'm going to go play, uh, be back as my normal self. Yeah, I'm picking Arizona to win this game, Shane. You know what? Your logic makes sense. A few weeks ago, I would have thought, you know, UCLA was winners of six in a row. And then they have absolutely gone backwards. Mm. Uh, Did not play well. Uh, They lost to USC. Then they got swept up at Washington. I think their losing streak continues. They are under 500, as we discussed earlier in the show. And I think Arizona wins this game by three baskets. So we'll say Arizona by six. Now, on to Saturday, USC team playing a little bit better, put a scare into Washington State, did not get the job done on Thursday. Uh, and then I don't, I don't believe that they won in Seattle either. They did, they did beat Washington. Oh, they did beat Washington. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, They did beat. So they are playing better. Uh, they beat Mm -hmm. Washington 82 75. So will they beat Arizona, Shane? Yeah. UCLA's put it together a bit lately, but Arizona's the better team. And, you know, assuming that Arizona's going to come in off a loss, which I will in this case, I will assume that Arizona will have lost to UCLA a couple nights earlier. Arizona still never lost back-to-back games under Tommy Lloyd. If they lose at UCLA, I think they take their frustrations out on USC on their senior day and win by double digits. I'll say 15 points. I'll take Arizona to win either way, but go going off my premise that they lose to UCLA. I'll I'll take them to bounce back and beat USC comfortably. I think USC plays it close. I don't think it is a 15 point game. I'm going USC by seven or or, USC by seven. Definitely not picking that. Uh, (laughs) I'm picking Arizona by seven. So I have Arizona by six over UCLA and by seven over USC. I think this team has gelled. I saw what I needed to see in the second half against ASU, a team that was not necessarily, it's kind of on the ropes. They played a great first half. They were on the ropes, got it to be, I think ASU got it to five or six. It was single digits with going to the last media timeout, I think. And and I was getting nervous there at, at the bank or whatever that was called. And then Arizona turned it on. And that's kind of how I feel as to what will happen in both of these games. So I think Arizona getting hot at the right time. And I think they get a sweep this weekend. So I no Debbie Downer here, uh, like I was last week with the women's team. Unfortunately, I was right. Uh, yeah. And again, I, I thought both games would be single digits last week, and they were blowouts. So I think, you know what? Arizona's getting the road sweep this week. Feel pretty good about it. Well, I'll take it. No, I, I as always, I, I gener- or almost always, I prefer your scenario. I'm just, again, I'm, I'm being stubborn. I, you know, that UCLA game, I mean, Arizona, it was a classic case of the McHale Center crowd dragging Arizona past the finish line. They won't have that this time where they fall behind at UCLA. Well, we want to thank Ted Robinson for joining us. Mike Kintner, the GM of Harris Auction uh, Casino, joining us. Uh, very excited to have the sponsorship Wildcat Country presented by Harris Auction uh, Hotel and Casino. So very excited to work with them over at least the next year and hopefully beyond. So for Shane Dale, I'm Eric Cohen. Thanks for listening. And as always, bear down. Bear down.